In this story, the plagues that befell Egypt and the subsequent freeing of the Israelites are often interpreted in different ways. Some believe that the series of plagues were meant to demonstrate the power of God to both the Egyptians and the Israelites, as well as to show that God's power was greater than any of the Egyptian gods. Additionally, these events served as a way to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and towards the Promised Land, reinforcing their faith and trust in God. Ultimately, the story is a complex narrative with various interpretations, but it generally illustrates themes of liberation, faith, and divine power. In the biblical account, each plague that struck Egypt was seen as a direct challenge to one of the Egyptian gods or goddesses. For example, the plague of turning the Nile River into blood was viewed as a demonstration of God's superiority over Harpy, the god of the Nile. Similarly, the plague of frogs was aimed at Hecate, the frog goddess, and so on for each subsequent plague. By targeting these specific elements of Egyptian worship and daily life, the plagues were perceived as a direct confrontation of the Egyptian pantheon of gods, showing that the god of the Israelites was more powerful and supreme. This interpretation highlights the theological and symbolic significance of the plagues in the context of the biblical narrative. Due to 400 years of enslavement, the Israelites had internalized a mentality shaped by their experience as slaves. The term often used to describe a mentality where individuals have internalized a sense of oppression or subjugation, akin to the mindset of the Israelites who had been enslaved in Egypt for generations, is psychological slavery or slave mentality. This concept refers to a state of mind in which a person or group of people continue to feel powerless, inferior or dependent even after physical liberation from oppressive circumstances. Breaking this psychological slavery often involves not only physical liberation but also a process of healing, empowerment and redefinition of self-image and identity. In the case of the Israelites, their journey from slavery to freedom encompassed a transformative process of breaking free from both physical and psychological bondage. God was attempting to convey a crucial lesson to the Israelites amidst their ingrained slave mentality developed over years of oppression, that He alone is the one true God. Through the remarkable events unfolding in ancient Israel, God sought to showcase His supreme power and sovereignty to both the Israelites and the world. This narrative holds relevance for us today as we navigate our personal journeys. There are instances when we desire instant results and immediate gratification, yet often there is a necessary process that God intends for us to undergo. Just as the Israelites needed to unlearn and relearn God's ways, we too may need to shed light on the little gods in our lives, the false idols or distractions that we unknowingly elevate above God. By refocusing our reliance on God and aligning our lives with His principles, we can experience a deeper connection with the one true God and find fulfillment in His divine guidance. Psalm 32, 8 NIV I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. This verse reassures us of God's personal guidance and instruction in our lives, emphasizing His care and love as He leads us along the right path. Let's pray. Father, we humbly come before you, grateful for the profound teachings found within the pages of the Bible. Reflecting on the experiences of the Israelites serves as a poignant reminder for us to examine the aspects of our lives that fail to honor and glorify you. Show us, Lord, the little gods we unknowingly prioritize over you, whether it's our devices, social media, entertainment distractions, or other worldly pursuits. Grant us the wisdom to discern and eliminate these distractions from our lives, allowing your glory to shine through. May we not repeat the mistakes of the Israelites by grumbling and complaining, but instead help us to embrace our identity as your children. In the precious name of Jesus, we dedicate this time and our lives to you. Amen.